couch Dogs need a thousand Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome finger style lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which we're going to learn three magnificent, ma just spectacular exercises designed especially to enhance your thumb control and thumb independence, and also your thumb creativity, as you're going to see. Um, these exercises are just invaluable, in my opinion, because they touch three different areas. Soloing over a continuous bass note, soloing with harmonies over a continuous bass note, and adding a bass groove to a chord progression. Okay, so you're gonna enjoy this immensely and this is gonna greatly enhance your thumb independence and thumb control. You're gonna see, trust me on this. Now, before we're gonna start, I wanna mention that this lesson is sponsored yet again by Skillshare because Skillshare love licking riffers and they just uh, don't wanna stop giving you free membership. So um, Skillshare, if you don't know what it is, it's a website and an app for smartphones for video courses, learning via video courses. You have three, four, five, six hour courses over there for anything from photography to graphic design to drawing to painting to um, coding and website building and even music. Okay, whatever you wanna learn, you can find it on Skillshare. And Skillshare wanna give the first 500 people to click the link below in the description two full months of free premium membership. So the first 500 people will click the link in the description below, uh, get two free months of Skillshare. And I gotta warn you, it's addictive, okay? I got addicted uh, at some point to Skillshare and I just couldn't stop watching courses. It's a lot of fun, it's video courses, you just sit there and watch the courses and learn and become a better human being. So um, click the link in the description and get two months of free premium membership. Thank you very much, Skillshare. All right, so um, exercises, okay, once again. Soloing with single notes, soloing with harmonized notes, okay, two notes, it's called double stops over continuous bass notes. Those are the first two exercises. And the third exercise is adding a bass groove to a chord progression. Right, so we're gonna use a scale on the D string, okay? I won't tell you what scale it is, okay, because you can change the note, uh, you can change some of the notes inside it. I'm gonna show you what you can do and create different modes and different variations of the scale, so it doesn't really matter what scale it is, okay? The basic notes are 0, 2, 4 on the D string. 0, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 10, and 12, okay? You can do 9, 11, 12, okay? That will give you a different sound, as you're gonna see. You can do 5, 3, 2 instead of 5, 4, 2, okay? So the scale itself, okay, the theoretic definition doesn't matter. Our focus is the thumb. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about theory at all here. Okay, so um, very, very basic exercise before you can do, you know, something like this. Okay, something like this. Um, my goal is for you to be able to improvise with it eventually and become creative using your thumb groove. Okay, so the very basic thing to do is to play a bass note and then a note of the scale. Okay, so again. Zero, two, four, five, seven, and then back down. Okay, you can do three instead of four and get a different scale. Okay, so um, just play along with that for a while. Okay, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to play the scale in order. Now your next uh, exercise, okay, after you've done this for a while, would be to play two bass notes, okay? Okay, it's the same idea, just with two bass notes instead of one. Ah, hey, sorry about that. Um, and I wanna apologize because I jumped to the next exercise by mistake. Again, because I got into the movement and started improvising. So, two bass notes. Okay, you can mute the bass string. Okay, to get that riff sound. Um, and add a bit of dynamics, but you don't have to do it yet. 
Now, the next exercise, as you saw, uh, would be to play two bass notes and then one bass note and hopefully um, do it without pre-planning. Okay, you play two bass notes, two bass notes, two bass notes, one bass note, one bass note, one bass note, two bass notes. Okay, so remember, you can play 10 or 11. Okay, you can play 9, 8, uh, 9 10, 12 or 9, 11, 12. You can play three or four okay so you have five four two or five three two okay you can get different results out of it it's it's to keep you from getting from you know getting bored because it's basically the same harmony all the time so if you change the scale you change the harmony a little bit now you can try it with the a string as well that as well. Now all I'm doing is play, uh, I play um, two bass notes and then a note of the scale. One bass note and then a note of the scale. And I do it randomly. Two, two, one, one, two, two, one, 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 two, one, two, 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 two one. Okay. And I'm trying to kind of challenge myself. I don't want to get into a fixed pattern. And whenever I feel like I get into a fixed pattern, I try to break it. Okay, this is where the creativity part comes in. Okay, so... Okay, you can also let a note ring and just continue playing a bass note. Or, instead of just a continuous bass note, you can play a groove. yourself complete some freedom over this exercise okay you can start adding hammer-ons and pull-offs if you like okay but this is an advanced exercise okay only add hammer-ons and pull-offs after you've done all the previous exercises single notes okay, and the bass notes, one bass note, two bass notes. Okay, this is the difference, short or long distances between the solo lines. Okay, and again, feel free to experiment and challenge yourself not to get into a fixed pattern. all of these exercises okay all these exercises were just the first exercise okay it was exercise 1a 1b 1c 1d and so on and so forth um which uh which is basically the same exercise because your goal is to be able to play whatever you like okay with this exercise and you're soloing on the d string and you can exchange the the fifth and the sixth string okay <laughs> into my own uh, mind too much so I tried to interfere and not create a pattern too much so I got myself completely out of whack but it's also a good test because it shows that I can come back to it okay if you can make mistakes and not stop that's a great sign that your thumb is becoming independent and you're, you're fully in control of it because the mistakes don't throw you off <laughs> See, 
A string, E string, A, whatever you like. You can stay on the A string, you can stay on the E string, or if you want to challenge yourself, you can change between them. Okay, to change the harmony a little bit, just to prevent yourself from getting bored and hearing the same harmony all the time, all right? That's the first exercise. The second exercise is exactly the same exercise, but with harmony, okay? So, okay, it's, the, okay, it's this. It's strings two and four this time, and you play, okay? Two and two on strings two and four, three and four on strings two and four, five and five, seven and seven, okay? You can go on, okay, with eight and nine if you like, 10 and 10, 12 and 12, okay, and create a complete uh, harmonized scale. So again, two and two, three and four, five and five, seven and seven, eight and nine, 10 and 10, 12 and 12, okay? And it's exactly the same exercise, exactly. You start with single notes. Okay, single bass notes. Then two bass notes. Okay? And then you start to mix. Okay, and remember, you can play it just out of order, just randomly. Experiment, okay, the scale here is just a suggestion. You don't have to play exactly what I play, you can change it if you like. You can play four and four. Then you get a different mode. You can play eight and eight. Again, you get again a different mode. So the scale is just a suggestion. The uh, focus here is the thumb. Right, so that's the second exercise. It encapsulates everything that you played in the first exercise. You know, it's all its subsections as well. Just everything the same, just with harmonies instead of single notes. Now for the chord progression. Okay, that's completely different. That's a completely different approach, right? We're gonna use uh, a chord progression, okay? A uh, nice chord progression that I found um, over a decade ago. Uh, just love the sound of these chords. Okay, so it's based around the E major seven, if you want to know. Um, and the chord looks like this. Okay, it's open uh, first and second strings. Okay, all the time with this chord shape. Okay, on strings three, four, and five, you have eight, nine, and seven. Okay. Okay. Okay, eight on the third, nine on the fourth, and seven on the fifth. Okay? okay, and you take it down two frets. Okay, you take it down two more frets, and then you take it down one fret, and instead of three on the third string, you play four. Okay, right? so you get the same note twice there. On strings uh, two and three. Okay. But um, it's, um, it's intentional because this chord is, is outside of the musical context. So, okay, and this also leads you back to the first one. So the basic picking pattern for this is this. Okay, strings five to two, 
and then a strum. Okay? It's kind of a slap strum. Okay? With a slap to the bottom strings and a strum to the high notes. Okay? So you get okay, this sound. So okay? that doesn't really matter if you just strum it. Okay? Okay? Strings five to two and then a strum. All chords. a bass groove to it. Now you can become creative with the bass groove itself but the basic bass groove, okay, we're gonna start with the basics and build our way up, okay, is to play the bass again, okay, the fifth string, okay, and then you get, okay, okay, this is fairly simple, right? But you can create a different groove. You can create. Okay, which is what I originally did. Um, you can play the, the um, extra bass note right after the strum. Okay? That, 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 that bass. Again, we're just getting started. Okay, so you have two options. You can do bass, bass. Okay, or you can do bass, 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 bass. Okay, with uh, with a long uh, interval in between, interval of time. You can slide. That's your second option, the distance between the bass notes. Okay? And then again you can add a slide or you can add a hammer on. Okay? You can add a hammer on. Okay? Okay, hammering on the same bass note from an open string. Okay? Pull off instead. Uh, sorry. Okay, it's just one extra thumb movement. Okay, one extra thumb note because you already have the thumb. Okay, it's not a it's not a a, a complicated addition. Okay, you're not, you're you're playing a bass groove, but you're actually just adding one note because you're already playing that next note. Okay, if you're playing Okay, this or a pull off. Okay, you're not actually playing a full bass line. You're just playing an extra note. Okay, this because the next bass note is already in the chord. Okay, so think about it like that. Okay, so again, recap and then I'll add another challenge. Okay, that's the normal uh, bass line, just straight notes. Now with, uh, with an offbeat, the second uh, one, with the long distance, the long interval of time. Okay, so. Then you add a hammer on or a pull off. Also, uh, start adding a solo. You can do um, seven hammer on to nine. Okay, and then the next bass note. And then five hammer on to seven. And then three hammer on to five. So the chord, hammer on. Okay, seven hammer on to nine. Next chord.
can guess what I'm about to say, right? Combine everything. Combine everything. Everything you just played. Okay? I played this by, by mistake. Uh, now, um, when you let yourself be free, you can play open strings as extra notes. Okay, you can play the open string. Okay, you can create another uh, variation on this. You can pull off, play the open third string, and then the next line. You can play the bass note again, and then open string. Okay, I'm playing the third string. I'm just playing the bass note again and then an open string instead of a pull-off or a hammer-on. I, I hadn't thought of that before, my fingers just did it. So... Okay, just open strings. You can play strings 2, 3, and 4 together. Okay, you can play the bass note more than once. gets tired really fast that's why I didn't show you uh, this option because it's fairly obvious and it's kind of like the previous exercises I wanted I wanted to give you something different okay so now I'm gonna try to demonstrate it myself and get into the moment so you can see and hear how it goes when it's played you know in full groove um, and before we do that click the link below in the description remember go grab your uh, free two months of premium Skillshare membership okay, you don't want to pass that opportunity so click the link below in the description and then go practice this um, I'll try to come up with something interesting <laughs> I forgot to mention, you don't have to play the pattern, of course, you can play, yeah, you can play the chord again, yeah, you can play, uh, you know, a groove with the chord, you don't have to play the thumb groove all the time, okay, it's just an exercise for thumb independence, but it doesn't mean that you have to play my picking pattern, right, it's just, just a suggestion. slide up and down just randomly yeah, and just you know do whatever you feel like that's that's all that's what thumb independence means that you can do whatever you like over the bass notes Okay, so you go have fun with this. Click the link below in the description for your free membership for Skillshare. I said that more than enough times. I just want you to do it because it's so much fun. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Skillshare, for um, you know for coming to me again with this offer. This is amazing to me. So uh, I'm honored. And I will see you guys and girls again in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Enjoy.